Hello, my name is Martin and welcome back to another video. So it's Wednesday and sometimes on a Wednesday, if I do a video, I do something off topic, off the normal videos that I usually do. And I'm gonna follow up from last week's video about gear. Now, if this isn't the video for you, that's absolutely fine. Tune in on Sunday and I'll be back with the regular explore. Okay, so if you're gonna stay, I'm gonna, like I say, I'm gonna follow up from last week's video. Um, I talked about my gear and it seemed to be quite um, popular. Quite a few of you liked the video and were quite positive about it. It stimulated quite a few questions and I thought, right, okay, I'll do a follow-up and I'll talk about the stuff you've mentioned and you've asked me about in a second follow-up video. Probably won't be a very long video, but the first thing I'll do, and I'll get straight into it, is I'll mention something that I spoke about last week. Do you remember when I spoke about the Rode Wireless Go? Transmitter receiver all right and i said absolutely amazing because you can walk away from the camera clip it on yourself well it does have an inherent design fault that i need to warn you about because a few of you said that you liked it and you might buy it and i thought damn i didn't mention the design flaw this is the design flaw if you're going to use this outside you obviously need the wind muff that it comes with right as I say, if you're gonna do anything outside, like I do, you need the wind muffs because you can't have your shot ruined. You can't have your audio ruined by a wind rumble and it will affect your shot. Even if it's just a breeze, it can ruin your shot. So like I say, the Rode Wireless Go comes with a wind muff and the little wind muff there just clips onto the top. There, like that. There you go. And then it clips onto you. The design fault is that it falls off way, way too easy, way too easily. Um, it's supposed to have been redesigned so it doesn't fall off too easily, but it still does. And I think when I was doing, um, I did one of the videos, I did the outward colliery video where I walked from under a bridge to the camera. By the time I got to the camera or on one of the takes, it had fallen off. I had to turn around and retrace my steps to try and find it. Not good when you're out and about <clears throat> in places like where I go and you're going to lose little bits, little fine bits like that. The annoying thing is that you can't buy these separately. And so far, I can't see any manufacturer on, um, on Amazon that's come up with an alternative. So. I don't know what you'd have to do. You'd have to either email Road and say, can I buy them? Or, you know, they'd probably tell you to buy a completely new set. But it's just not good enough. It really isn't. And it's just such a bad design. And I've tried to press it on, see, and it still won't stay on. So I might do a modification. And what I've got is these things from Rycolt. Can you see that, Rycolt? Okay, and what they are is, I'll do that again, the little round sticky pads, double-sided sticky pads, so they pull off there. And the round sticky will probably sit on there, and then I might either stick that on that come with it, or you, these actually come with a little, little round wind muff that sticks on, I might put that on. Um, I've used all the wind muffs up, but you get the idea. This thing from Ryko that you can get on, um, make it focus, that you can get on uh, Amazon, <clears throat> comes with a little wind muff that sticks on it, but it's a permanent stick on. It's not like my G7X where you can peel it off. So that is possibly the workaround. Um, it's a proper it's a proper annoying because I'm going to use that mainly for being outside and that little wind muff just ruins everything. I've thought of elastic banding it on but it's so small the elastic band goes over the center and then affects the sound. Um, I'll think of a workaround. I'll think of a workaround but annoying. The only the other way is on the bottom of the uh, on the bottom of that you'll see that there there's two little claws but the focus, focus in. See the two little claws that go in? Well, they're two little claws like that and they should sit in the holes on top of the, uh, the, the transmitter. I might dab a little bit of super glue and permanently glue that on because I can't afford to lose it. And you know, and I, I use it at most of, 90% of the time I'm using it outside. So 
there's gonna have to be a workaround. Anyway, that's, that's that. There is an alternative to this system. So the Rode Wireless Go is one transmitter to one receiver. Um, the alternative is the Saramonic Blink 500. Um, I'll show you a picture of it. It's apparently very good and it's two transmitters to one receiver and it will mix the audio at the receiver and it will go into your camera so you can wire up two people. I was looking at that, but again, it's more outlay. Uh, the only thing about the Saramonic Blink 500 is it doesn't really have a, a little display on it. If you look at the, the Rode Wireless Go, if I can focus that, as I speak, you can see the little uh, meter on the receiver there going up and down. So I can say to someone that's got the camera, ooh, I can say to someone that's got the camera, Am I, are you receiving me okay? And they can immediately say, yeah, I've got sound. And off we go and we do the uh, take. On the Blink, Saramonic Blink 500, I don't think it's got the as much of a display. I'm sure there's little indicators and lights, but it's not the same as having an actual LCD display. So consider that, look into that one as well. If you're looking for a wireless microphone system, look at the Saramonic Blink 500, because it's, um, it's worth getting. That will, uh, that's the same as this, the transmitter's got a, a microphone in and you clip it to yourself, but also you can plug in a, um, a lavalier mic and you can actually buy separate lavalier um, windbuffs. I might have to do that with this, I might have to buy the actual lavalier mic and then buy the separate muffs and just, instead of using that mic on there, I might have to uh, just plug in the, uh, the lavalier and put a clip on the lavalier. So nothing's without its problems. I'm surprised at Rode for that. They should have come up with a better system than that. Uh, it's normally pretty good Rode. Anyway, let's crack on. Let's get me a list. What else am I going to talk about? So the next thing I was going to talk about briefly was 4K versus HD. I uh, film in HD. I know a couple of people that film in 4K and one of the problems with filming in 4K is the file sizes are massive, massive file sizes and it's slow sometimes to uh, render on your computer in your editing software. Um, I use HD. I can't honestly see why you wouldn't want to just film in HD at the moment. 4K is great but by the time YouTube have took it, compressed it down, um, can you notice the difference? I don't know. And for all the extra processing power and time it takes to upload, to, well, to render on the editing software and upload in 4K, I don't know that it's worth it. Now you could argue that maybe by the time, if you're filming a higher spec, by the time YouTube took it and compressed it down, you've still got a decent picture because you've initially started out with good spec. But, I don't think my videos in HD lack anything, to be honest with you. But yeah, 4K HD. Um, if you feel that like I should be filming in 4K, then by all means let me know, but I am probably not gonna film in 4K because of the uh, extra processing power, the file sizes are massive, and just to upload it, it takes a lot longer. And there's times at the minute where I'm uploading on the day that the video is due to go out, sometimes two hours before it's due to go out because I've been working on it on the Sunday on the very day. So let me know about that. And let me know what you think about 4K versus HD. Right, so sound wise now I'm using the Rode Wireless Go. So I just, for that initial clip, because I wanted to show it to you, I wasn't using it. I don't know if the sound's changed. If you think it's better, I'll find out in the edit anyway. Right, so the next thing I want to talk to you about is this thing here that was on the desk last week that I actually never got round to talking about. Voiceovers. So I'll have to aim this as if you're a budding YouTuber and you're going to um, do something similar, you know, maybe do voiceovers yourself or do a YouTube channel. So this, if you're gonna do voiceovers, you, usually in your editing software, it should allow you to click an option where you can do a voiceover. You could use the onboard microphone on the laptop. Not a good idea. Like cameras, these microphones are quite often an afterthought and are not very good. What you want when you do a voiceover is a really nice, warm, rich, bit of bass in your voice sound. 
Um, I use this. This is the uh, Blue Yeti, um, available on Amazon. It's a USB microphone. Comes like that. Um, there's various modes on the back, you can switch it to be, you can alter the gain, you can switch it to just pick up from the front or from around it, um, various settings, I just use it to pick up from the front. So um, obviously it comes with a lead, I've not shown you that, and that plugs into your, your laptop via USB and you can just do your voiceover. If we look at the house here, it was in the state of semi disrepair, however looking forward, we can see now it's completely been raised to the ground. I never do a voiceover in here, although I film in here, I never do a voiceover in here because it's too, there's too many hard surfaces in this room. I've had to put a bit of a rug down in here and cover some of the uh, hard surfaces. It seems to be all right with this microphone. It seems to not be too bad, but voiceover wise, not very good. I have seen um, YouTubers doing voiceovers under a quilt in bed. So they'll actually get in bed or they'll, or they'll bring the quilt downstairs, put the quilt over them and do the voiceover because the quilt absorbs all the sound and you get this kind of like nice, smooth, rich sort of voiceover. So <laughs> here's a tip for you. Um, so far I've managed to avoid doing voiceovers under the quilt but I'd never do them in this room. Uh, I usually do them downstairs on the settee. There you go, that's voiceovers. Uh, the Blue Yeti, there's, vari there's, there's variations of it. If you look on Amazon, you can get the type I've just shown you. And I think there's cheaper types and there's, there's, a, there's a variety. Or you can just, you don't have to get a Blue Yeti. There's various microphones. You just, just type in on Amazon, USB microphone. Right, so just checking my list. Right, so the next thing I'm going to talk about is music. Okay, music. When I first started out on YouTube, I had a hell of a job trying to find uh, the right music. I think music's important. I think it can make your video better. Uh, it's not necessarily going to make a bad video better, but it can help make your video a lot better. A simple scene that you've shot nicely can be even can be much better with nice music. Um, which leads me on. So copyrighted music. You are not allowed to use copyright music on your videos on YouTube. And we could go into that one and you could argue, well, wait, if you do, it will promote that piece of music for the artist and all the rest of it, because I could put my sort of music on. You could ask me who it was and I say, oh, it's this album, go and buy it. And you might do that, but we won't go into that one. Let's just deal with the reality. You're not allowed to use copyright music. I know that you can type in your, fa your, your favorite artist's music and get it on YouTube. Um, I don't know how that works. Those people won't be making any um, uh, advertising revenue from that. Because some of those, um, if you type in, for example, the cure of forest, right? Something that I might listen to. It can some, they can sometimes have hundreds of thousands of views. Now, that person that uploaded that won't be making any advertising revenue because it will have been demonetized because it's not their music to use. They probably had a copyright uh, warning off uh, YouTube and it's just been left like that. I would love to use some great music that I'm into from bands that I like on my videos. But what would happen is I would keep getting copyright warnings, then I'd get a copyright strike, then I'd get three copyright strikes and the channel would be taken down. So I can't use copyrighted music. Whenever you do see a YouTube channel that's doing something that you might be interested in and they're using copyrighted music, I immediately don't take them seriously. I cannot take that channel seriously. I told you, I have a bit of attitude and opinion in these videos on Wednesday nights, so you'll have to just forgive me. But yeah, if you was to upload a video, some explore, uh, a railway line, and you put on some music, say from another band I like, New Order or something like that, Joy Division, I wouldn't take you seriously. I would just, because because I know you're gonna get a copyright claim, and they know that if you keep doing that, you're gonna get copyright strikes and your channel will be taken down. So what's the point of me getting into your, your channel when it's gonna disappear soon because you're using copyrighted music? And you've not, you, you People that do that, just it, it's effort to find non-copyright music. It is an effort. And I think if you can put that effort in and find a nice piece of music 
that you're allowed to use, I think that means that you care and you care about the video and you want it to stay up. <laughs> right, that said. So where do I get my music from? Well, like I say, initially in the early days, I proper struggled. And I there is a, a YouTube library of music, uh, quite an extensive library. If, you, if you've got a channel, you're going to create a studio and there's very, I, I can't remember how you get to it now, but there's, there's a library of music you can use. The thing about the YouTube music is, it's, it's never quite right. There's a couple of them that are good, that are quite atmospheric, but it's never quite what you want. And I've got, I've got, I'd like to think I've got quite good taste in music. <laughs> Who hasn't? We all have good taste in music, don't we? But it's never quite right for me, the YouTube library. Some of it's a bit cheesy. Some of it's a bit, it's almost right, but it's just not quite. So what I started to do was you can look at these websites um, that, where you can get music. And there was a couple of them that I looked at. Can't remember what one of them was called. Anyway, you have to buy each piece and you have to say what you're using it for, YouTube, and they'll charge you a certain rate. And depending on the size of your channel, they charge you a certain rate. Back then, I was getting it for about, uh, I think 20 odd quid I paid for a piece of music once because I loved it so much wasn't worth it and it was completely unsustainable. I'm going back four years ago now. I remember loving this piece of music and going, bloody hell, bugger it, I'll buy it. And I used this piece of music. But what it did for me was it made me realize that this piece that I'd got was so brilliant and, and transformed the video so much I thought it's worth investing in that that piece, that in, in good music. So, I had a go at making my own, as you know, back in the early days. Some of it worked, some of it didn't. It was a bit amateurish. Um, I've actually had comments of people saying that I liked it when you did your own music, and, and it's just like, it, yeah, but it was, it was too much because I don't have time now to do the music as well. And sometimes I'd want to achieve a particular type of atmospheric, and because of my lack of knowledge of music, I could never actually quite do what I wanted, what I set out to do. So luckily I met Dean and he started doing some of the music for me. Dean, Sensory Triggered. Um, if you check him out on Facebook, he's got his own Facebook page with all the singer-songwriter stuff that he does and some of the strange music he does, um, some of the soundtracks he does, which is always, like I say, something strange and atmospheric, he does for me on the videos. He doesn't do all the music on the videos because I am, uh, there is a website that I use where rather than pay for each individual piece of music, you pay a subscription and then you can basically use it for whatever you want. It's an amazing website, it's called Artlist. Uh, I'll put a link here. Uh, but it's a subscription and you, I think it doesn't matter if you, if you like ITV or BBC, if you, I think if you, I don't know, I think if you pay their, their subscription, um, you can just use it for whatever you want. So I can use a piece of music and I can use it over and over and over again in videos. Um, it's fantastic because you just, it's good music and you've not got that worry of copyright. And um, like I say, the other website I use, you could use it once for one video. On Artlist, you can use it multiple times in multiple videos. So once I've downloaded it, I don't know how it works. They seem to know my channel. They know when I upload it, it doesn't stimulate a claim. So yeah, I use a website now. I've got Dean and sometimes I will occasionally use the YouTube studio for music. And also if you're looking for good music, you can type in on YouTube, copyright free music um, and type your genre in that you want, uh, you know, ambient chill out or something like that, or dance music, and you'll usually find what you're looking for. Um, you can't automatically download it off YouTube. You might have to go through a few links to, to get to the actual file. And then even then, they, they, they want you to credit them in, in, the, um, in the description of your video. And it is important that you credit them in the description of your video. So there you go short piece about music and the problems with music and the music that I, I use. And the other thing on that as well, quite often people, they might like the music I use in the video and they'll say to me, what's that piece of music? Where can I find it? And it sounds like I'm being awkward, but I just say, 
It's off a website I use and quite often this stuff isn't available anywhere else. A couple of the tracks that I've used, you'll get an artist and a name of the song. You put it in a Google and you can't find it anywhere at all. It's like they've obviously got exclusive rights to that artist's uh, music or that particular track. So there you go, music uh, and the problems with music. Let's crack on and move on to the next subject. Right, so I've just made myself a brew. Let's consult the list and see what's next. Drones. Yeah, you said I want you to talk about drones, Martin, and so I've put it on my list. Right, so drones. I have had three drones uh, while I've been on YouTube. The very first drone that I bought was a Phantom 3. Um, the, the video that I first made with it is there way, way back on my on my channel somewhere back in, I bet it was 2016 or something like that. Anyway, the Phantom 3. I was in Heaton Park with it in Manchester and suddenly it decided to fly off on its own. Talking to someone about it and they said, oh yeah, my, uh, my Phantom 3 does fly off sometimes. I went, fly offs? You serious? These, this thing can fly off on its own? Yeah, it's just a, a signal problem. No. Not having that. I can't have a drone that doesn't behave itself. So uh, the Phantom 3 lost all faith in it and I sold it. It was a good little drone to be honest with you, but I lost faith in it and sold it. So there was a gap. I'd had a, I've made a little bit of money back off my Phantom 3 and I decided to buy the DJI Mavic Pro. Great drone, absolutely brilliant drone. And that was the one on the 25th of February 2018 I splashed down into the River Irwell and it's still down there to this day as we speak. And we had a bit of a laugh about that, didn't we? And we made a video about telling you about it and I made a video about going to try and get it out with the magnet, which was a complete failure. Anyway, that was the one that I lost. Um, I then waited a while. I then just thought, expensive and I can't afford to ditch another one into the river. So I think I waited, waited, debated, saved up, debated, saved up, and eventually in uh, March of 2019, last year, I bought another Mavic Pro drone. I think it was a, a Mavic Pro Platinum. They were coming towards the end of that Mark 1 Mavic Pro drone at the time, so there was only the Platinums left. And the Platinums, I think, were just a little bit quieter. Uh, they were just like a slightly deluxe version to the original one that I had, or the other one that I had. So I brought a Mavic Pro, um, and it was great, and we did Cadiced Viaduct with it, we did Victoria Mill, we filmed the chimney and everything. Brilliant, great to have a drone back again. And guess what? In about November of last year, that drone got nicked. <laughs> I have no luck with drones whatsoever, do I? So I, 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 think, I didn't mention it at the time, but to cut a long story short, I went to a very rough area in Manchester to film something. There was a, some old railway viaduct. It was just overgrown on the top, but I thought I'd get some drone footage of it because somebody had said it might be being pulled down. So I got my drone footage and uh, then made the crucial mistake. Like I say, it was a rough area. There were people, there was houses around. I put the drone into the car and went off to film the railway viaduct, take some photos and film it. Got back to the car, window's gone, somebody's gone in, poof, took the drone and believe it or not, they took me waders as well. The, um, I didn't notice until a week later that my waders had gone, but they just took out whatever they could. They knew the drone was there, they'd seen me with the drone. So the drone went and my waders went. So I felt very stupid and very embarrassed because I just thought, why did I not just put the drone away and drive away, knowing the area that it was? So foolish me, um, it's all sorted. The car's fixed, they've smashed the car window. It's all sorted, it's all done with, it's over with now. The drone's gone. So I'm droneless again, <laughs> droneless again, and I have no luck with drones. So what I've been doing is, um, Mark, Ginger Mark did some drone footage for me. Connor did some drone footage for me, God bless him, Kerbex UK. Lewis, Ringway Manchester did some drone footage for me, and a guy called uh, John, uh, the Mank drone guy, uh, did some um, footage for me. Uh, will I buy another drone? I don't know. I'm, I'm at that stage again where I'm umming and ahhing and don't know what to do. I, if I do, the plan is to either go in very cheap, or there's a very expensive one that I want. You could argue that I shouldn't be buying an expensive one, but I'll tell you, the, the cheap one is the Mavic Mini. 
So if you look up the Mavic Mini, it's about £349. It's the cheapest one they do. It's, I've seen it in action. It's a great little drone. Uh, it's because it's so light, it gets a bit of wind. It can move about a bit in the wind. And we went to a particular place with the Manc drone guy recently, and it didn't go very far. It only was about 800 meters away, and it started losing signal. Now, the manufacturer will claim it can go much further than that, but we started having signal problems at about 800 meters. Although it did the job, it got the shots. The other drone that I want, if or if I go, you know, if I go very expensive, will be the Mavic Pro 2 with the Hasselblad camera on it. <laughs> and it comes with a remote control. It's you don't on the other drones, you stick your phone in the remote control and your phone acts as a screen. This one has got its own screen and its own remote controller. Um, it's not cheap, it's a thousand seven hundred quid. I ain't going to go for it at the minute because it's going to take a lot of thought before I invest that much in a drone. But the Hasselblad camera, um, the, the, um, the quality of photography, you know, that's what I'm seduced by. And also when you're looking up into the sky when you're flying a drone, you're completely blinded. Even on a dull day, the sky blinds you. You look back down to your phone screen and you can't see. You can't see a thing. Now, I know you're going to say you can buy those little shades that shade the sun from your drone screen, but it still doesn't, doesn't help you when you're looking up to see where the drone is and then looking back at your screen. The remote controller on the Mavic Pro 2 um, is a brighter screen and it overcomes that problem. Wow, seduced, eh? I am. <laughs> but like I say, at the minute... That has to go on hold and I might try and continue to use the services of my good friends for drone footage. Drone footage is great, um, it's, but it can only enhance a story somewhat. It's like, it's the, the sort of like the sprinkling on the top of the cake really. It's the, uh, the hundreds and thousands or the cream on the coffee. It doesn't make the video. What story makes the video, a good story makes the video. If you can throw in drone footage, you might be able to illustrate a point on a chimney or something, or you might just be able to throw in some nice shots, uh, uh, you know, aerial view, but you can't. I don't think you can just show all drone footage and think that it's gonna go, you know, there has to be a story, and drone footage has to enhance that story, I think. I think that's the case with drone footage, but it's it's you can't beat it. Aerial footage, it's amazing, isn't it? And particularly when you're looking at a building or something like that. Quality of shots. So in the past, I have hated myself. I've watched myself videoing and been so annoyed at myself because I've watched my footage back. Imagine that's the camera. And it's just literally like that all over the place. You know, and you can't follow it, and you're following it like that. Oh my God, can't follow that. It's all over the place. I've had to learn to try and get more still shots and do cinematic pans, if you can, to show a room, rather than go, oh, look up there, look at that, look at this. Because for you to watch back, it's awful. I always have to work on that and try to remember that, because quite often you get somewhere let's say you get into an old factory or something like that. You get, the camera comes out and you immediately start filming. And I've had to learn to try and stop. Just take a moment, look around, try and work on the shots that you want or what will best show that place and then go into it. There's, there's this tendency, this is this is the adrenaline rush to go, camera out, straight into it. And you know, sometimes, I go to a place and I don't want to start filming. I want to just look around the place and enjoy it. So what I try and do now is that if I've got time. Like I say, early footage was could be quite all over the place. I try now to, to work on my shots better if I can. There are exceptions. Um, I'll give you an exception of recent stuff that I've done that I was just bloody annoyed at, to be honest with you. Town hall, um, some of the town hall shots, and this is my fault, nothing to do with the people that showed me around. When you're being taken around a place, you're kind of indebted to the person that's showing you around, and so your camera's out, 
and they're leading you say through a building and you're having to film on the go and so it turns into this oh and then then they're up there waiting for you it's like oh yeah I'll just try and get that and then run it up and catching up with them so it can be a real challenge sometimes um, and some of the best places this has happened in Williamson Tunnels um, Town Hall where else did we uh, another building that I went in the um, the refuge building where you're being shown round and you kind of like you know really what you would want is to be shown round and then work it all out and then go around again and film it but you're very much aware that the person your host is stood there waiting for you <laughs> to get those shots so it can be a challenge sometimes it really can be a challenge um but I'm working on it, I'm trying to work on that, uh, those, trying to get those more, because you have to just establish where you are, don't you? Um, like I say, I've seen other YouTubers do it and they're just, camera work is all over the place. I can't call them because I've done similar, but it is unwatchable. So all the time I'm always trying to work on those better shots, if I can, if I've got the luxury of being able to indulge myself. That's it. Um, I just thought I'd follow up. If there's anything else you want me to talk about, I will do. I know some of you mentioned editing. Um, I would probably have to um, run through an, an edit or something, a, a quick edit, uh, and do it with my screen capture software and voiceover as I'm doing it and just show you what I do. Um, and also, I use one type of editing software, so I'd have to show you that and then probably try and recommend some other alternatives for you. So anything else you want me to talk about, I will do. I'll do a follow-up if, if need be. If not, we'll, we'll leave it there now for this one, and I'll probably think of a completely different subject to do on a Wednesday evening. It's not necessarily going to be every Wednesday, but whenever I can, I'll do a Wednesday evening off-topic uh, video. There you go. I feel that uh, we've cracked on through it. I feel that I've addressed some of the things you mentioned from last week. Thank you everyone for supporting me. Thank you everyone on the join channel who joined the channel for supporting me. Thank you to all the people who support me through uh, PayPal. I have seen, I don't want to put your names up because I want to respect your privacy, but people have donated to me through the PayPal button. Thank you very much for that. Thank you very much for watching and enjoying this video, this alternative video. I'll see you at the weekend with another Explore. Um, thank you, <laughs> thanks very much and I'll see you at the weekend, bye for now.